Hi, welcome back to an episode of Message and Call. What is the topic for today? Uh, I'm struggling with the topic for today. What do you think we should talk about? So what about the last week? Well, in the last video, at the end of it, you said you were going to talk about uh, a different framework. Okay, uh, yeah. Instead of safe. So why don't you just talk about that? You're absolutely right. Uh, well, I look into it a little bit and I realized that I actually have two videos out there that I have done and talk about the Agile Donut. So one is uh, a recording of a live session or presentation that I did uh, back when we had a Dude Solutions Day. So I can share that. I'll re-upload it and share that. And also the other one is kind of a uh, retake of it where I'm kind of more of in the studio environment and going over those things. So having done that, you know, I was like, well, should I do it again? Maybe not. I kind of got lazy about it. So maybe we can just talk about it in a different way. So what is it that we want to know? So let's start with something simple. What prompted uh, the start of it? How did it all begin? Good question. Well, I guess it's similar to any other organization where we were using an old um, methodology, you know, waterfall process, uh, teams in different uh, locations, uh, and then, you know, it comes to time to delivering, we were not delivering the product in the right time frame. We constantly were behind uh, the curve. So it takes a long time to send the software out the door, you know, to spin something up. So running projects, every time when we start the projects, we got to go find resources and things like that, uh, takes time to ramp up. And then uh, in the long run, you know, it, it doesn't, we, we did not actually meet uh, the timeline. So it's very normal, very standard, just like any other organization. So what would you do? So in that instance, uh, the management had the uh, idea of, well, let's look at Agile. How, how does, you know, what are new ways of developing software? So Agile was one of the methods that uh, they look into uh, and they kind of uh, uh, started down the path, investigated, uh, hired a consultant, uh, basically asked Jason Tanner to come in uh, to look and assess the organizations and that we can see if we can even go Agile. Uh, and then after that, they engaged Bob Kalen uh, to help coach the organization to, into that direction. So all was really, really well. So that's kind of how it all started. So what's this framework that you talk about? I'm not sure that I would now call it a framework. I know in those videos uh, in my presentation, I do talk about it as being a framework, but looking back at it now, I don't think it's a framework. It's just merely a way of solving problems. So basically along the way, as we grew larger, as we add more teams, uh, and more people, how do you work uh, as a single unit? As how do we move in the same direction? So we look at different, uh, you know, models, ways of doing things, for example, uh, we adopted Spotify, uh, how, you know, the tribe and squad concept, those are really good. And I think it was one of those things that I would say for any new organization that you want to go into it, I say get away from thinking as teams but as squads and as tribe and then there's chapters I think those will get you away from the silo thinking uh, of back end front end you know and then UI and then the testers and things like that I think the chapters concept works really well so that's one of the things I really like about that the other part of it is the notion of solving the communication problem how do we all communicate now that we're much bigger? Two teams, three teams, four teams, five teams, and eventually six teams. Uh, with that, then there is this notion of direction of where to go, and then the, uh, the goals and in terms of what are we building. So we had the product owners and we had uh, PI planning, uh, which basically we took it from SAFE, right? And SAFE has this big room planning, and we didn't do that. So for the Agile Donut itself, it wasn't about scaling, it's more about solving the problem that we need in a way that allow us to move a group of people in the right direction. And I think that's how I would put it today uh, compared to a couple of years ago. An Agile Donut? Well, who came up with that stupid name? All right, it's not stupid. It is kind of, well, okay, fine. It's kind of stupid, but it is funny. I did that, I love donuts. It's one of those things where, you know, as a Scrum Master, as an Agile Coach, I for one love donuts, so I constantly brought in a lot of donuts. So it becomes one of those things that every two weeks you got donuts for everybody. 
uh, and it was either me buying it or it was either Brent Peps or Josh you know we're gonna take rotation and buy donuts so much so that it was kind of ingrained in us that it's donuts it's almost like a place where always have donuts and people always complain at me because I was bringing them food uh, so it's yes it is kind of stupid but it kind of stuck me and Josh went back and forth in terms of what we want to call it you know you gotta have some name to it to kind of identify itself uh, and what it is so we call it agile donut partly it's because one you know there is a notion of what makes the donut we all know what a donut is right but what makes a donut so the dough the dough itself why does it make it so good so delicious is the dough so the dough represents for us is basically the agile manifesto uh, it's kind of the dough. The basic ingredient special sauce is the Agile Manifesto. So staying true to it. And then the circle uh, that we see in it, the circle of a donut, the round shape of a donut, when we talk about it, it's basically Scrum. So we did use Scrum uh, at that point in time. And then uh, we added stuff to it. For example, PI planning. Uh, we had this uh, a little bit more of a long-term roadmap planning, for example, uh, things like that. So what do you use for things like that? So those are the sprinkles on the donut. So that's kind of how we, you know, metaphorically put it in place. So we call it Agile Donut. And if you're going to blame anybody, you can blame me. I was the one that kept telling Josh it's an Agile Donut. So yes, that's me. <laughs> what did you learn from it all? So one of the things that I did learn in that journey uh, of scaling, you know, horizontally, vertically, is basically this, is that there are multiple different ways of solving a problem. And most of those problems that I look at it, you know, from my lens, I think they're just communication. How do we communicate? Uh, how do we, you know, ensure that we're all moving in the right direction? And that's just communication. So I think one of those things looking back is putting those communication pieces in place and then not alienating anybody, but working as a team. Even though you have 60 people, you're still working as a team. Uh, you may be broken down into smaller squads, you know, six, is, you know, around five plus minus seven people. Uh, that's a scrum team, so we call them a squad. Uh, how do you get them working as one? You know, between the squad itself, how do you work uh, as a single unit? So I think this basically one of those things in there. And, and the other part is that we didn't necessarily have to follow a specific framework. We didn't have to go buy safe. We didn't have to go do less. We didn't have to do all those things that's out there. But in reality, if we follow, or if, you know, that's kind of what I learned is that if we were to follow the Agile Manifesto, you know, going in and looking at things, getting a team, getting people collaboratively working to deliver a product and then inspect it up along the way, and then you can basically create your own um, framework. And I know framework is probably not the right way, but the way of how you develop software, the way of how you do work. I think that's the biggest thing for me that I learned. If you had the chance to redo it, what were the things that you would change? Ooh, very good question. Okay, uh, what what would I do again? I think one of the things that I would probably redo, or maybe not redo, one of the things I'll probably introduce is more of a fixed cadence. So we had a sort of a PI planning cadence uh, every almost every two sprints, which is every month we, we meet. Uh, and then we also had hackathon in between. We had a lot of those things. I think one of the things that I will probably want to do is is going a lot more closer to safe where at the end of a safe PI uh, cadence for example uh, there is this IP sprints that they have where they get time to reflect so we did have all this stuff in the agile donut but it wasn't uh, I guess properly packaged so I'll probably do a tribe retro uh, at the end of a PI and a hackathon and then making sure those cadence are always fixed because we didn't have that so it was kind of all over the places I think it, it created some confusion for team members where they didn't have enough time uh, to do their work even though everything was planned properly we had the right schedule and things like that I think that's one of the things that I would probably introduce and change is it really scalable is it really scalable um, I would say yes I think there are probably more things to uncover when you add more things to it. One of the things we had was we had a tribe with about six squads in it. So six squads, about, we tend to have seven people per squad. So six times seven, think about the math. Um, it was okay. I think there were people grumbling about the 
uh, PF planning because it was taking too long. But in the, in the grand scheme of things, if you think about it, and you look at how you know safe, for example, does it? Safe had it where it's a full two days, and for the agile donut, we were doing it in about four hours, which is impressive enough. So I think if you go any larger, if you go any more, you know, you scale more to it, then you probably want to increase those uh, time for communication. Um, so it's one of those a uh, question comes to mind: Is it scalable? And then we got it up to six squads. I think you can go to more than that. For example, uh, I believe. If you look at uh, Fidelity, uh, I, you know, I was at the recent uh, Tri Agile uh, 2019 and the opening keynote by Jerome uh, from Fidelity basically talks about the exact same thing. And I'm sitting there in the, you know, on, on there listening to him talk about it and going through it. And I'm like, oh, deja vu, because that's everything that we have. Uh, so it's very similar to it. And I think Fidelity is doing, and I believe there's other organization that does something similar as well. So. I truly believe it's scalable. Is it perfect? Probably not. It will be more things to add to it. And I think I like about the Agile Donut is that it's not a very prescriptive way of doing things other than what ways, you know, how do you solve a problem? What problem do you have? And then how do you solve the problem? So that's one of the things that I did like about the Agile Donut. Well, I hope that was helpful uh, to all of you that's watching this, you know, the videos that I had, I'm going to put the two links to it in the comments below, in the description below. And also add the links out here uh, for all of you. It might be here, it might be here. I always forget where it's at. My guess is probably it's going to be here most of the time. Uh, but I might be wrong. It might be over here. It's a 50-50 chance. All right, so do ask questions. If you have questions about what it is, go ahead and ask. I'm going to share those videos. I do want to warn you guys that the videos are not of a high quality. There's one that I did kind of... Uh, more of a studio style uh, it's a couple more videos early on that I did so it's more tolerable uh, hopefully this helps uh, in terms of talking about a different way of scaling uh, where you don't really have to go towards you know either scrum at skill or save and there's other ways of doing that but one thing for sure is that it's always interesting to hear what others are doing so if you like this video give it a thumbs up like, subscribe, and talk to you all soon. Bye.